I was so happy to be fit for jury duty. It's like watching court TV, except I'm in the TV, just like the boy from Willy Wonka. Harry Doyle. Hello, Jimmy. Archie Long. Son of a gun. Jeez. How long's it been? Too long. What? Too long, Jimmy. You guys know my bodyguard, Vince. So, is this business or pleasure or what? Business. Vince, blow. Sit down. You want lunch? They make a decent club? No, no. We're looking for the guys. Huh? We're looking for the guys. Which guys? I know lots of guys. Three Finger Brown, Monk Donovan, and Philly the Mouse. That's right. Oh, oh you, you want to get a hold of the gang. What you got, a stick up? <laughs> you need pieces? Uh, no, no, we just need the gang. Oh. Hey, Fitz. Wow. Where's Philly? Pennsylvania. No, no, Philly the Mouse. Harry and Archie need him for a stick up. In the bar. Uh, uh, thanks, Jimmy. Uh, Lou took us to the law library and made us do some homework. But in the process, we uncovered some sensitive information. So he opened my front door, and there he was, standing on my porch. Question, Mrs. Martin, what did you say then? Answer, I said, Reuben, what, what do you got there? there? I was, I was in, in my, my 90, 90 at the time. At the time. That's nothing. <laughs> Gets much juicier. Turn the page. You know this case? That's me, Harry Lordley. Attorney of record for Bonnie Martin. Then I said, Reuben, what do you got there? And he goes, flowers, candy, and a little imagination. And he starts undoing me, and he goes, now, what do you got there? Never happened. It's not true. Why, Harry? I can understand why she's upset. Look, I, I had no control over my client. The judge is a crook. He made sure he got a piece of the action. Put in the fix, had me removed from the case, and disbarred. Want we'll to have some lunch? Yeah, sure. See, what you're up against is crooks. Robbie Mark only knows what he learned from the devil himself, Clifford Downey. This guy is a gold mine. Harry, 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 can you throw us a slider? How about that partnership agreement between Reuben and you? We don't have one. Yeah, we do. We have an agreement. We have a verbal agreement. Verbal. Now, just to play it safe, let's pull out the one I notarized a month before Reuben signed those ridiculous low papers. This is something. Here. You're not gonna read that, Lou? Yeah. I'll give it a quick perusal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you get into court, until you get yourself a lawyer, if you can find one that'll touch this case, you'll represent yourselves. They call it in pro per. This one, there's no problem. A thousand? Oh, that's great. Oh, and I got this uh, Rolex Oyster Perpetual. The usual on that? Yeah. Thanks. Always a pleasure. Ernie, I know you like to find your own things, but you say you're in a fix. I know somebody, a longtime customer, and I know the merchandise involved. It's very tempting. IBM? Sorry? Italian businessman. <laughs> no, 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 nothing like that, nothing at all. It's a dentist. What kind of steel? Swedish coal rolled, 247. Here, 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 and here. One inch plates. Copper to bind drills. Titanium alloy here. 
This is a well-made, very expensive, very special vault. English. Richmond would like it. I need a very special piece of equipment. Fill a hole in the lockbox? No. Each one is made different. There's no way of telling where the lockbox is. I want to cut me a whole new door and walk in. Seven, eight thousand degrees. Portable equipment. There's no other way to do it. No. Sonny, if I can build something, it's going to be a son of a bitch to use. Okay. So is it worth it? It is worth it. Listen, if you got some extra cash, buy oranges. The price is low, and I can promise you there's going to be a trucking strike. Is that a bribe, Mr. Scalise? It's a prediction. No. I wouldn't try to bribe Eddie Cusack. They tell me you're incorruptible, untarnished. I hear they call you stainless steel on the street. Me, I think you're a pain in the ass. Looking for one of your nephews. Tony Luna. Goodbye, Mr. Cusack. Nobody talks, right? That's right, Sergeant. Just like the cops. Just like the Camachos. Nobody talks. Omerta. Profit motive. Competition. Free enterprise. Is there any company that doesn't have a product in production? We're falling way behind. You haven't exactly been helping. You know what's wrong with production? Bullshit. Every sales manager I know helps with production. Yeah, like who? Percy, sit down. Percy, I have to let you go. You're terminated. Terminated? Oh, what the hell is that supposed to mean? You're through. You're fired. My partner, Mr. Waller, didn't like that scene in the garage with those kids and that music. He has his own organization, his own people. So this is the big payoff. After breaking my hump around here for years, doing the work of four people. Now this is the big payoff, right? You haven't been doing the work of four people lately. I had to hire that kid to help you. You're not a well man, Percy. You're not as young as you were. Mr. Waller wants you out of that room. Maybe, Lewis, just maybe, this is a blessing in disguise. God put us here for one thing, Sonny. To create new life. A man isn't a man until he holds his child in his hands. And then he's a god. Lambeglia, I want your permission to marry your daughter, Teresa. Has she consented? Don't misunderstand my reluctance, Sonny. I've always had a large affection for you. I've always enjoyed our informal friendship. And <laughs> you call me Joey Bags. But if I give you my consent, you realize we can never have that again. I do. I do. What would you do about Teresa's older brother, Aldo? With your permission, I'd like to take him to Atlantic City and teach him the casino business. Good. I'm going to miss our friendship, but I, I welcome a grandson. You have my blessing. Thank you, Don Baglia. Listen, <clears throat> Don Bagley, I want to introduce you to somebody. Vinny Terranova, this is Don Bagley. How you doing? Joey Bags. How are you? You a Bronx boy? Nah, Brooklyn. Who played right field for the 52 bums? I don't know. It's a little before my time. So is Columbus, but you know about him. There are certain things that every Brooklyn boy should know, irregardless. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, uh, <clears throat> Vinny's got to make a trip to Philly. Uh, yeah, Don Bagley, pleasure. 
The general secretary will first fly to Washington to meet the president. From there, they will go to the University of Chicago, where the atom was first cracked. And fittingly, just before Christmas, the season of peace, they will go to the United Nations for this history. Boy, it's on the old platform. Muy da cavarilis. So ruski be America, it's be. For was more than Steve Fortas Yomki. Television and company have been charged with me. Что это состоится сегодня вечером? Mr. Dubrow? Morning, Kyle. Where's Mrs. Dubrow? Scouting hotel sites in Alaska. <laughs> We've come to see your father. So what do you think? I want you to stay. This is the finest hotel in the entire chain. Yes, it is. matter with me I just say to court what do you mean you ain't a going we got to go we got no place to stay I ain't saying for you to stay you, you go right along yeah I'm staying I give her going over all night mostly this is my country I'm along here don't give a goddamn these orders a great to crowd the fell out of bed even I ain't going. Boy, Grandpa, you ain't slept all night. You let your boy set you down on a nice mattress. We got her fixed up right here. I've got some soothing syrup. It's gonna make you nice and drowsy now. After you've had a little nap, we'll have a long talk about you staying right away. I ain't going. 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 I ain't this whole floor smells like stinky feet. Oh, don't freak out. It's a bruise. It's a bloody thing. It's a bruise. Can I just say right off the bat, this is a big mistake. Don't say nothing until we talk to our lawyer. You're going to be sorry you ever mess with Stanley Yelnuts. Let me see that. Just don't grab it out of the hands. Why not? Because you're going to make him angry. I don't care about me. Would you like a piece of cake? Excuse me. Check the bedroom. Just a minute. Where, where, where are you going? This warrant isn't warranted. This will never hold up in court. Uh-huh. Here it is. We got it. We share the room. How do you know that's not mine? Which bed is yours? You don't have to answer that. We have the right to remain silent. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? You sleep here. It's all because of your no good, dirty, rotten, big stealing great great grandfather. There is no curse on this family. There is on the men in this family. If only, if only the woodpecker's side. Please don't say that song. The bark on the tree was as soft Please as don't the sing sky. That song. Not on my table. Ma, relax. I don't believe in the curse, anyways. We're gonna need a damn good lawyer. We can't afford a lawyer, Pa. We don't need a lawyer, Stanley. We'll just tell the truth. Stanley Yelnats, please rise. <sighs> Stanley Yelnats, the fourth. Honey, would you smell the shoe? Oh, my God, honey, can't you just wait till I'm finished eating? I know I've asked you a million times, just a million and one more. Smell the shoe. Honey, I don't smell anything. What? I don't smell anything. Uh -huh. Pa, what do you smell? Nothing. Peaches and onions. That's the secret. I don't smell anything. You don't smell anything. I don't smell anything. Ooh. Whoa, I don't smell, smell anything. anything. We don't, don't smell, smell anything. anything. I told you I was on the brink of no stink. I don't smell anything. I don't smell anything. Okay, one more thing. No matter what is in this box, mm -hmm. we are still family. We're we are the yellow. Come on. Come on. Yeah, we know. Cross one. Your fingers. Cross your fingers. Two. Two. Come on, Ken. Three. Oh, my God, honey, you still got it. You are so strong. 
Let me see that. Sure. Look at this. Okay, yeah. guys, hold on, hold on. Before we do anything, I think that it's only fair that half of whatever's in this box goes to my best friend Hector Zeroni. You want to go have this? Well, did you say Zeroni? Sure did. <laughs> Boy, Jake. Oh my God, is that really worth twenty-five thousand dollars? Hold on, check the date though. AT and T. Yeah, there's the name. Nineteen oh five. What's it worth, honey? It's worth a lot more now. Millions. Millions? Millions. Millions. One for us, one for Mr. Zeroni. One for us, <laughs> one, for us. one for Mr. Zeroni. Boys! Do good, bro. So, Hector was able to hire his own team of private investigators. Turns out his mom had been looking for him, too. I love you. As the politician, when, when we were young and easy and the mercy of his means, is the way Dylan Thomas put it. The year was 1937, 61 years ago, the Great American Depression. Nobody was working, especially the actors. They were all at liberty until the Federal Theater came along and gave them jobs. In Chicago, though, there was one company called the Chicago Repertory Group doing plays as they called it then, of social significance, about strikes and getting a better world. The first, I was a member of that company, and the first play we did was Waiting for Lefty by Clifford Odette, it's about a taxi cab driver strike. <laughs> but we had trouble with our third play called Bury the Dead, an anti-war play by Irwin Shaw, in which the dead soldiers come up and will not be buried anymore, a Bertolt Brecht type of play. We couldn't find a kid. I had the role of the burial detail chief, a GI, a William Malden, Bill Malden sort of character, burying the dead, very cynical guy. I needed an associate. We had no young kid in our company. It's still boy meets girl. We need a young kid, a juvenile. A kid comes in named Nate Davis out of nowhere, reads for the part of this young 19-year-old kid, and our director says he's a natural. That was his first time in the theater. And then came another play called Cradle Will Rock, folk opera by Mark Blitzstein. Orson Welles did it for the Federal Theater in New York, and their opening night was a miraculous one. It's a long story in itself. We, the Chicago Company, did the first production outside of New York. And in that company was Nate Davis. Mark Blitzstein, the composer, came to see us one night, and a certain people he liked, especially young Nate Davis, as the kept poet by Mrs. Mister, who ran the town. Years pass, World War II, and as movies, you know how the calendar goes, 1937, 38, 39, 40. Finally, it's after the war. I'm now somewhat mature in years, shall we say. And I'm in the audience one day seeing a play by Sam Shepard. You know, the, what the name of that kid about the death of the child? You know, you got it. And there I see on the stage an old gaffer. And he's quite remarkable. And I said to him, that's the kid. <laughs> that was the juvenile who became a, as you know, a very highly respected and stalwart character actor in Chicago. That's why I get award now. And I thought to myself, this is what's known as continuity. This was known as growing old gracefully, but more than that, artistically. 
He is going with the clock rather than against the clock. And so it's natural that he, Nate Davis, get a lifetime award. It's my delight then to be here. And I say to him, the dice is yours, kid. Take it. There's a French expression, say, called quelly. I've been quelling ever since I heard that uh, I was going to be given this award. I'm a very lucky man. I have with me tonight, first, the woman who made it possible for me to return to the theater after a long period of absence when I was playing the real-life role of Willie Loman. And I got fired in January of 1976. And I went to work for that first season in Court Theater's first equity season, playing Lord Capulet in Romeo and Juliet. And it was quite outstanding because I'd always been intimidated by Shakespeare. My background was Odette's. <laughs> and then I went on and helped start Wisdom Bridges' first equity season, doing comedians. Bob Falls was instrumental in doing that. Anyway, I must tell you, I have practically my whole family here. My son, my daughter, my two sons, my daughter, came in from California with their grandchildren, and my great-grandchild is here. They all came to help me celebrate this wonderful award, and I must thank the Jefferson Committee, Joan and Carol Black, I love you. Yeah. And my whole equity ensemble. It, I've been very active in Actors' Equity for many, many years. I am now a, a, a member emeritus of the Chicago Regional Board. Anyway, thank you very much, and I love the whole family. I have an enlarged family, the whole community, when I come here to these affairs, I get to see all the people that I've worked with and loved. I must give you one little note, though. When I heard that I was being nominated, I went back in my files, and I looked through envelope after envelope of plays that I had been in, and I looked at reviews, and I looked at contracts, and I looked at programs, and I began to, and I looked at all those little cards that we sent each other on opening nights. And I, I thought, well, maybe I do deserve this award. <laughs> we had a good time. Didn't we, Mr. Jones? We had a good time. A very good time.